And welcome to Bad Marriages in the Bible. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Kate. I'm Sean. We run Dandelion Ministries, which is dedicated to sharing the grace of Jesus Christ in your place of need. Mm. And we love to do that through creative means, uh, music, art, um, podcasts like this one, uh, Barbie videos called Betsy Bible on YouTube, um, anything that we can think of. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Retreats. And... That, that we like to do. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Anything we like to do. Uh, so, um, and we really love to um, pull out the big messages of the Bible, um, and particularly for this podcast, the bad marriages in the Bible. Mm. Um, there are so many, so many of the um, the characters in the Bible are telling stories on themselves of their mistakes and their wrong turns because it shows God's surpassing redemption. His redemption is always bigger. That's right. That's right. And so this is... Uh, we we begin with marriages, but it's really just a gateway into all relationships of all kinds. That's true. So you don't you'll you'll get something out of this if you're not married because you're part of a family system. Mm-hmm. You have a mom and a dad. Um, you have siblings. You're all in relationship. Um, you're in relationship with other people. <laughs> you are in relationship with other people, unless you are living yeah. in a cave. And so there will be conflict. There will be friction, and uh, we want to see what we. God does when we have conflict and friction and um, uh, broken love between people, especially Mm. people who love each other a lot. That's right. That's right. And we've been looking at uh, the quote unquote first family kind of thing. Mm. If we're Mm -hmm. thinking of like uh, the first family of the United States Mm -hmm. presidency type thing, this is uh, the uh, Jewish royalty. (laughs) This is um, which the, um, isn't that this week? This week is the coronation of. King Charles. Oh. So I'm sure you all watch that. And um, who's not Jewish royalty? Not Jewish royalty <laughs> at all, but royalty nonetheless to us somehow <laughs> in America still. Um, <sighs> even though we also kind of don't recognize it. Did you know that no president of the United States has ever gone to a coronation? Oh. I'm sure it's because of like, well, we kind of fought against you guys and rebelled against you. And um, anyway. They, so, they'll go to a Knicks game, but not, <laughs> <that's right. laughs> not a coronation. That's right. uh, no. <laughs> King of England, no, no thanks. <laughs> but anyway, um, we have been looking at Abraham's family and his offspring, and we are with Jacob right now. Uh, Jacob and Esau are the children of Isaac. Yeah, the grandchildren of Abraham. Yes. And so they are. We're, we've been hanging out with Jacob and kind of his family, side of his family, um, thus far, but, and now we're going to actually see them run into each other again. Yes. And so, uh, we talked about this in the podcast. Sean was called, um, sibling rivalry. No, it was called, no, nope, um, it wasn't, it wasn't <laughs> called that. <laughs> That's right. It was called playing favorites. Okay. So if you look in our list of podcasts, playing favorites is when we describe, um, Jacob and Esau were twins Yes, and they wrestled in their mother, um, Rebecca's womb. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we're, we're coming back to it here. We've been out of the, out of the groove for a week. Esau was definitely the older one and uh, Jacob was the younger. But then in playing favorites, we describe how Jacob stole the, the firstborn blessing from right. Esau and posed as his brother and um, tricked Isaac into blessing him as in giving him the the inheritance and the blessing of the oldest child and stealing it from Esau. Right. Which was all a prophecy that Rebecca had received that said the older shall serve the younger. Yes. And, um, and so she went about making sure that happened and really wanted, uh, Jacob to get that blessing too. So she was all part of playing that trick on Jacob. That's right. Excuse me, not on Jacob, on Isaac. Isaac, Isaac yes. her husband. Yeah. And so that's where the bad marriage part came in. <laughs> that's where there was a bad marriage in there. And so, and what we've been seeing a little bit with their, with Jacob and his family is we've been seeing the dynamics. We're, we're going to get into that again in a couple episodes. We're going to mm-hmm. see his children and how the dynamics have played out because he has multiple wives. Um, and that playing favorites is something that passes. It passes on down to him, yeah. Down through the generations and something that sadly he does to his sons too. Right. 
But we catch up to them now where Jacob, we uh, last episode talked about, um, was it last episode or the one before when he was running from Laban? I can't remember. I have to apologize too on that note that I misnumbered the last episode. The Mandrakes is actually episode 15, so that should be corrected now on your podcast. If you watched, you were probably staring at two 14s right there. Yeah, and- like, what's happening? <laughs> Sean is leading me astray. My life doesn't make any sense. But We protest against counting. That's so. right. <laughs> um, so uh, Jacob had big uh, problems with his father-in-law, Laban. Yeah. And was, uh, we talked about all that because of all the dynamics with his wives, uh, Leah and Rachel primarily, and mm-hmm. then the servants. And, and um, so Jacob, finally, after having these kind of run-ins with Laban. Who's also his uncle, too. A yeah. double, double combo there. There, there you go. <laughs> Most of you probably don't have any rela- relatability to that. But, um, yes, so there was all these. The monarchy f- does, though. <laughs> <laughs> There go. <laughs> Not these days, but back then. <laughs> certainly, certainly. In the olden times. <laughs> mm. Sorry. We, uh, no, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> um, Jacob was finally told by, by the Lord to actually go back to his father's land because he, w- he had left, if you remember, um, fleeing from Esau because Esau wanted to kill him after stealing yeah. his blessing. And so Jacob had gone and uh, to his uncle's land, Fled for his life. His mom's brother. And um, and had been living there for the past 20 years because 20 he was, years. he's been working his butt off to try to get to pay his father-in-law for his wives. Yes. The two daughters that he got tricked into marrying one of them. And um, so. And Laban was not a fair guy. You know, he was constantly um, manipulating and, and twisting things around on Jacob. So right. for 20 years, Jacob had a miserable time working for him. That's right. And in fact, Jacob tried to flee from Laban and they did a, a, a midnight getaway with Rachel and Leah and his female servants and mm-hmm. their 11 kids and their, all their cattle and all of the wealth that he had accumulated. They fled. And that was our last episode. Um, but Laban caught up to them. Right. And was definitely going to do something, you know, unfavorable towards Jacob, <laughs> except God intervened. Yeah, he wanted to basically kind of take back all the stuff that Jacob had gained under him, you know, like mm. all his wealth, because Jacob had become a wealthy man after uh, herding all of Laban's sheep and goats and all that kind of stuff. And there Apparently was, he's rather skilled. He's very skilled with it. And there was all this kind of crazy dynamic with the sheep and the goats and who gets speckled ones and spotted ones and all this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, But Laban wanted to come and basically claim all of that for himself. And uh, God defended him. Yeah. And told Laban not to say anything bad or good to, to Jacob. And to not do him any harm. Yeah. yeah. And it was so profound that Laban, who is a trickster and a manipulator, he woke up and he was like, I'm not going to do any harm to Jacob. Right. <laughs> and he didn't. <laughs> right. No, he didn't. And they ended up making a covenant with each other, basically saying, um, you know, you stay on this side. They kind of built a little uh, Nebuchadnezzar, a little kind of tower of rocks mm. to mark their agreement. And Laban said, you stay on this side of these rocks. Mm. <laughs> I'll stay on this side. It's basically mm. kind of like, this is a, our little peace treaty. We're not going to mess with each other. And if we are, if we ever cross over in each other's land, we're going to give well, like tons of warning. Mm. And so it was kind of, a, you could tell, it was like the best they could do. You know, yeah. they really weren't happy with each other. And, um, but God tells Jacob to go home. And so in, in a way, just as Jacob is about to face home, Mm-hmm. and to face his scary brother Esau who's definitely stronger physically than him and um right. you know he was the hunter if you remember the hairy hunter <laughs> super and hairy. Jacob was the one who liked staying in tents <laughs> yes <laughs> and um and so he's he's scared and we'll talk about that in a second but um he's going back to face home because God has said go home and I'm going to bless you there um but he's nervous about it and it's almost like the Lord catches his arm on the way back and Jacob wanted to flee just the way he fled Esau in the first place. He wanted to flee Laban, but God um, has a better way for, for Jacob and helps Jacob confront his problem and brings him face to face with Laban and to 
um, you know, make an agreement the best they can. And now Jacob is not fleeing uh, Laban anymore. There's there's a an a agreement. Resolution, yeah. Yeah, a resolution. And so, and he, the Lord showed him another way. You know, yes, you can fight or flight. <laughs> like you can flight. Mm. <laughs> you can panic and flee. But I actually have a better way for you. And that must have been tremendously encouraging for Jacob as he went and, you know, started marching home. Um, in fact, that's how Genesis 32 begins. It says, on his way. So that's just happened with Laban. Mm -hmm. And on his way, um, Jacob sees angels. Mm -hmm. And he calls the place Menahem because, or Mahanaim. Mahanaim. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know how to pronounce that word, but uh, it's we can't count and we're not sure. <laughs> phonetically, that's how we got there. Anyway, Mahanaim. It's lovely. It is. And, and it means two camps. And so Jacob has his camp that he's traveling with, but now he sees the Lord's camp too, the angelic host that is with mm. him and is, um, you know, invisible most of the time, but is nonetheless with him and for him. And that must have been tremendously encouraging as he goes and enters into the thing he's afraid of most. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, this is kind of God just peeling back the, uh, the veil as it were, you know, between the two worlds and, and giving us a just a picture of how much he is with us. And like you said, so often we don't see it or feel it mm. when we're walking into difficult situations. Um, but this is the truth. You know, this is the promise that God has given to uh, Jacob's family from Abraham on down. And he's showing him in this moment, like, you're, I'm sending you back home and you're going to have to actually face the music that you ran mm. away from 20 years ago. And I am with you. Mm. I am with you mm. and I'm going to protect you. And um, I mean, you probably have had that experience in your own life. I don't know. Maybe you haven't, but I have. Mm. I remember trying to get the geographical solution when I was in my 20s. Mm. Kate was along for the ride. Oh, yeah. I said yes to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, we moved away from uh, my hometown because I was just really, I couldn't really think for myself, frankly. I had to spend a whole my whole time kind of trying to please others, trying to do what others wanted. And, uh, and then all of a sudden now we're adults. We were adulting, even though that wasn't a term back then. Mm. And uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do and uh, why I was doing it. And so we got the geographical solution and just mm. moved away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, and when we came, when we ended up moving back so we could actually finish seminary and all these types of well, things. And, and so that was, you know, the sort of fear side of it, yeah. but the, the faith side of it, and it's always sort of mixed together sure. <laughs> whenever we do something, the faith side of it was that we were putting all of our cards on the table and wondering, you know, are we really called to be ministers? Cause I was asking that question too. Are we called to ordain ministry or are we just, we weren't really walking away from our Christian faith, but we were no. just, you know, are we just supposed to be involved, you know, Christian people who have other jobs and I was desperate to have a normal job in New York city and <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> go out for dinner and live in an apartment. I wanted to do all that. And so there was that question, you know, what are we really called to? Um, so that was the faith side of it. That was the faith side of it. Yeah. For me, it was trying to get away from what I called white noise, which was, there were just so many people back in my hometown that I, that I had, given their voice tons of gravity in my life and I just yeah. couldn't really hear myself. If you want a, if you want a little uh, biopic about Sean Norris, <laughs> which none of you do, I know, but <laughs> if you do, go watch Runaway Bride. It's basically my life, um, <sighs> except for all the um, standing people up at the altar bit. But <laughs> the, the bride <laughs> part. <laughs> either way, there's a, the narrative is similar in the sense that she doesn't know what she wants to do and she doesn't even know what kind of eggs she likes. And I related to that. But it was really the eggs. It was the eggs. Scene. That's the only part <laughs> that has any tie over to my life. But I find deep meaning in it. So uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> so we had gone to New York. We did a lot of things. What kind of eggs do you like? <laughs> That's what we'd like to leave you with. Yes. Uh, Sorry. It's Eggs Benedict, which she actually likes best in the movie too. I mean, come on. Julia Roberts and I are best friends. Anyway. Um, <laughs> So we 
We're going to get back to the Bible. I, I promise. <laughs> but we were in New York. We did a lot of things in New York. The Lord actually um, blessed our time there. But then it was, we knew it was time. He was, he was closing doors in New York City and it was time to go back to finish seminary. And we both were getting clearer on that. And that was like this with Jacob, you know, I had to go back home and it was like, okay, mm. all the things that I left, it wasn't 20 years, thankfully, it was only about four, mm. but all the things that we had left were still there waiting for me. I still had to kind of face all the different people that I had uh, basically just wanted space from before. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it is scary. It's intimidating. And you kind of don't know, frankly, how things are going to go and how you'll be received. But it's still just something that the Lord, if the Lord's leading you into it, which he did. Mm. Uh, he gave us the grace to do it and to face That's it and, right. and to own. It was now with this real deep ownership of what we wanted to do and the call that we had. So it was That's very right. different. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> that's all to say that this is the kind of going uh, home, kind of going home that Jacob faced, and and it can be challenging and it can be frightening, especially if you have a lot of unresolved issues at home. Mm, mm-hmm. But it also can be an opportunity for God to show His powerful redemption. Well, which yes. is what he does, what he did with you and us, and um, and what he does here with with Jacob. Right. Um, one of our favorite uh, episodes. Um, we love this theologian Stephen Paulson, and he talks about um, when Jesus healed the super um, possessed guy, <laughs> a legion. He had a like legion, yeah. a legion of demons in him. He had so many demons in him, and he lived in a cemetery and was just absolutely crazy and couldn't be changed chained up you know he'd break chains he was very strong and scary and jesus heals him and casts out all those demons and throws them into a pig into pigs and um but he as if to show you know this man is more important than than all those pigs and there's a lot of meaning about the pigs too which we can go into another time but (laughs) the key thing um the man wants to follow jesus and he says you know actually go home and that is the biggest thing for this guy now who has been healed by Jesus. He has a new identity, a, a sound mind. He has been loved by, you know, God himself. And for him to go home was the call that Jesus had on his life. Mm. You know, it was a little bit different. Um, he would now carry what Jesus did for him. and But it was important for him to go home to do that. Mm-hmm. So beautiful little New Testament example of this. Mm. Um, so, so Jacob is going home right? and he's got, um, you know, his, his camp and, um, but he hears from, um, Esau, right. From a servant of Esau. Yes. He sends messengers, um, before him to Esau, to his brother, to kind of, he's trying, he's trying to do everything he can to kind of soften the, the reunion, Yeah, you know? And to kind of prepare Esau for his coming. And he hears that Esau is coming out to meet Jacob with 400 men. Right. Which the scripture doesn't actually interpret that for us. It's just Jacob who reads into that and he's just like, oh my gosh, he's coming to kill me with all of his guys. With like an army. <laughs> he's yeah. coming with his dudes to kill me and everybody that I love. Yeah. And so <laughs> he is terrified and it drives him to prayer. Yes. You want to talk about his prayer? Yeah. Well, he goes in uh, chapter 32. um, He turns to the Lord and starts praying verses 9 to 12. And um, and he basically, it's a real moment where you actually do get a picture into the the internal reality, kind of Mm. the inner workings of Jacob. Because so often, as we've talked about before in the Old Testament, you don't get any color commentary on what's going on in anybody's heart. (laughs) <laughs> you just see them doing things. Mm. But here we see Jacob's fear and we see him actually very repentant before God. And he, he cries out to the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac, you know, his fathers. And, um, and he says, I'm not even worthy to, mm. to be in that company. Yeah, You know, he's very aware of kind of uh, how he, he views his father and grandfather and kind of how he sees himself, Mm. you know, but he's crying out to God and, um, and he, he tells him to remember his promise essentially, Mm. you know, that God Mm -hmm. has promised Abraham and Isaac and Jacob that they would, that same promise that you're 
uh, offspring mm-hmm. would outnumber the stars, would outnumber the sands on the, uh, the grains of sand on the, in the sea. And, um, and so he's calling on God to remember his promises mm. uh, in the midst of what looks like the end. <laughs> mm. right? So he's sitting there staring down. It's, it's not unlike uh, what we'll see later. Um, well, it's what we've already seen with Abraham and Sarah looking into the face mm. of infertility and their ancient age. <laughs> mm. And then uh, what we'll see happen again and again and again throughout Israel's history where they are up against it. Mm. The biggest one being uh, sitting there at the Red Sea mm-hmm. and they have nowhere to go, nowhere to go. And Pharaoh is barreling down upon them, mm. the Israelites. And, you know, you remind God of his promise, mm. his faithfulness. This is something that, our, again, that theologian that we like, Stephen Paulson, um, who's a Lutheran. So he's usually re- uh, referring to Luther when he says things, <laughs> um, talks about being a fighting Christian. And this was something that Luther talked about. And fighting Christian doesn't mean like I can do it. You know, it's not the mm. the little engine that could. Mm. It's instead uh, I am going to hold God to His promises. Yeah. I have nothing to hold on to except for the fact that God has given me a promise. Especially in the face of its opposite. Yes, and so when I'm sitting there in a situation that's like my brother who wanted to kill me 20 years ago mm. has 400 guys with him mm-hmm. <laughs> barreling. They, they weren't barreling down, but they were coming out to meet him. Mm-hmm. Didn't they? It was actually a surprise party, <laughs> but it looked like an attacking army. It looked army. like they're going <laughs> to kill everyone. You know, that kind of scenario or the Red Sea or whatever it is when you're up against it and you really cannot see a way through, which is, I mean, Mm. every day oh my gosh <laughs> like the, every like day so there's many something instances. i can't find a parking spot mm. at the grocery store you know like ours are a little bit smaller sometimes but then there are times when they're very much oh my gosh, it's the at same the thing. same level oh yeah i want to find love and i'm lonely and i can't or i want children and i can't right. or i have children and i'm losing one or you or know my yeah one of my loved ones is exactly is dying or or um, i got married and we're having real problems right. and i don't know how to see my way through that's right. Those are excellent examples. And, um, and it's in those moments where we fight in the sense that we remind God of his promises. We pray them back to him, mm. the things that he's told us. And we are just saying, you promised, you've got to keep this promise. Mm. And we are holding him to his word. Yeah. And, you know, you may feel like maybe you've grown up in a tradition where that seems like somehow irreverent, but it is not at all. This is exactly what God mm. wants. He loves when his children hold him to his promises because he loves to prove faithful to mm. his children. Mm-hmm. And so that's what Jacob is falling on here. He's not falling on any of his good deeds. He knows he's been a jerk most of his life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. He is falling on the fact that God has chosen him and has given him a promise. Mm. And he's saying, please. Keep your promise. That's right. And you see this soft underbelly that has emerged um, over these last 20 years when he tucks in this prayer um, because I'm afraid. He says, I'm afraid of Jacob, of uh, sorry, of Esau. Right. I'm afraid of him and that he's going to attack me and the, the mothers and children that are with me. Right. All my family. You know, he's going to just, I'm worried he's going to have vengeance on everybody. And um, so... I love that. It's, that's mm. the place of prayer. So Jacob has a strategy in in the face of this, and so he decides to. So he's made his prayer. He's calling God to his promises, and now he has a, a strategy to approach his his brother and his four hundred best friends that are coming to welcome <laughs> <laughs> welcome him. They're hugging me with their swords and <laughs> that's spears. Right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what he's worried about, <laughs> and. Um, and so he has this whole, you know, gift system set up and he's like, all right, we're going to send out the, the whatever, the goats and like, first yeah, and then the sheep. 200 and then, female goats and a bunch of male goats. Yeah, yeah. so they're cows. all going to go like, yeah. you know, gift in droves. And then at, he's finally. He's going to love bomb him like they said in Ted Lasso. Yes. <laughs> love bomb. That's right. <laughs> anyway. And wear him down. <laughs> and um, there was a commentator I liked called. Derek Kidner and it's uh, on Genesis on this passage and um, an oldie but a goodie and he said Jacob is kind of approaching Esau the way a pagan approaches their deity mm. you know and you sort of see this in the 
appeasement. Joe versus a volcano idea where right. you're like, oh, maybe if we throw, you know, some chipmunks into the <laughs> volcano and then maybe some pineapples and then maybe it maybe a human, you know, that would help. Is that would that help? And so he's he's trying to appease Esau here. And um he has then he has Leah's family planned and then Rachel's family. Um so <laughs> you still see that favoritism which the will favoritism. Come back it also could later. be like the youngest goes last. It could be like that too, but probably right. not. <laughs> could be <laughs> So that's his strategy. Um, he does all of that, sends all those people out. And yeah. then he's still back. At well, the they camp. spend the night, he and his the humans, you know, the gifts have gone, but the the his family hasn't gone yet. And they right. spend the night and he puts them on the other side of this um river and he stays and it's the Jordan, isn't it? Yeah. And he stays back in this place called Jabbok um yeah. by himself. Mm. You know, he just needs some alone time before this big day <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's, he's worried he's gonna get killed the next day so he just needs a little bit of alone time <laughs> and it's in that context where the very famous famous passage uh you probably have heard of if you haven't read any of the bible you've probably heard about jacob wrestling the angel and if mm. you're a u2 fan then you've heard bono sing about it so mm. um and which song was that sean it's spilled the blue sky jacob mm. wrestled the angel and the angel was overcome so this is the moment where God comes to Jacob in the night and begins to wrestle him. And mm. some commentaries say that it, it's likely that Jacob may have thought that this was Esau initially, that Esau came and started wrestling him. And he's like, ah! Right. <laughs> so he fights hard. I mean, you can imagine a guy who's scrapping for his life. Mm. And But then he clearly realizes that it is not Jacob or mm. Esau. Excuse me. It is not Esau. And... um and we see that because he won't give up. And when he, he won't let go of mm. this stranger, mm-hmm. this man, I this mean, some, some translated as just a man, yeah, but obviously a divine man yes, because of what you're about to say. Yes. And he, he says to him, I won't let you go unless you bless me. And, um, and this man, uh, sees that Jacob is not going to give up. Mm. And so, what and he, in fact, he's kind of winning the fight. Jacob's kind of yeah, winning Jacob's the fight. kind of winning the fight. And so, what he does is he ends up just touching his hip and puts his hip out of socket just by touching it. Right. And that's when you see, like, oh, this, this is not Esau. <laughs> this is uh, this is God Himself. This is um, yes. many commentators say this is Jesus before in his in, in pre incarnate form. Mm-hmm. And um, and so the image that Kate was talking about, we talked about this before. Mm. It's kind of like when I wrestle with the girls mm. in that like they are trying their hardest uh-huh. and it is nothing for me to, <laughs> to <laughs> subdue them if I want to, um, our children. But, um, and there's, so there's like a playfulness in a way mm-hmm. because there's, he's not destroying Jacob when he could mm-hmm. with just a touch yeah, and without even a touch, he could just do it with a word. Mm. And, um, <clears throat> but he's allowing Jacob to fight his hardest. And mm. then when he sees he's not going to give up. He just touches his hip and puts his hip out of socket. Mm. And that's when Jacob says, I won't let you go unless you bless me. Yeah. So it's beautiful. It's, and we've talked about this too, that it's, um, I mean, Sean and I talked about it. We didn't talk about it with you yet, but I'm about to. <laughs> Here we are <laughs> talking about it with you. Um, that this is, um, an, he's acting out the prayer that he just made. Mm. Um, because he becomes aware that this is um, a divine man that he's wrestling with. And this this man came to him. Right. You know, Jacob was having alone time. Very important. You know, but this man came and sought him out and initiated this wrestling time. And Jacob got all of his stress out and all of his energy out on this guy and is desperate to have this guy. And he becomes sort of aware that this is this adversary um, is is divine and is God himself. And he's desperate for him to bless him. And he won't let go until that happens. And that is what he was doing in his prayer. You know, he's saying, Lord, I am afraid and I am unworthy. But you have said that you will bless me and that you intended this for my good to go home. And I'm calling you to your promise. And that's exactly what he's doing by wrestling with this angel Mm -hmm. and saying, I won't let go until you bless me. And so, um, there's this sense of the, like you were saying, a fighting Christian where you are, you know, it seems, you know, God is your adversary. He's the adversary of sin and of fear, but you're, 
you're um, saying the stronger thing is your forgiveness and of your redemption and of your healing and of your blessing. Mm. And that is what I'm calling on for you to um, have that be the stronger and the final thing with us. And, and, and the angel pre-incarnate Jesus <laughs> divine man does mm. and he does. And he gives Jacob this physical reminder with the limp and his hip out of joint. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, that I did come to you and I did bless you. And this is in the private with him and Jacob first. And now Jacob, and he's going to make it public. It's We're on our way to Genesis 35 where God is going to establish Jacob in his land and bless him. Um, and it'll be more public. But this is just for Jacob's heart and just between him and Jacob. And he gives Jacob a new name. He says, you're no longer going to be Jacob, but you're going to be Israel, Mm -hmm. which means he who wrestles with God. But it also means, and my commentator, Derek Gidner, also Mm -hmm. agreed with this, and it's all throughout your Bible. You'll see if you look at the little footnote, it could mean, you know, he wrestles with God, but also God strives on behalf of man. Mm -hmm. So that's really what the story is showing, that God sought him out and wrestled with him and then allowed him to, you know, sort of prevail against him. But with just a touch, you know, he could, he could have won Mm. (laughs) and he, and he did win because his real intention was to bring Jacob through repentance and into blessing. And so the, the angel did win. That was for Jacob to internalize that God was with him and was going to bless him and his redemption was stronger. Right. And we, it's, and it's a beautiful picture, you know, God striving for us. And, um, and we see Jacob recognize all of this because he asks him his name. You know, he's like, tell me your name. And um, the angel of the Lord says, why do you want to know my name? And mm. he doesn't answer it. And then, but then Jacob's names the place. Um, uh, what is the word? Peniel saying, I have seen God face to face, yet my mm. life has been delivered. So Jacob is, it's not lost on him. He's it's like when my kids think they've beaten me in a wrestling match, they know <laughs> that mm. they could have been destroyed. But, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. and so that's, he's saying, I've seen him and he has delivered me and he's given me his promise. Mm. And this is all building towards him going and seeing his brother. So we're seeing. Yeah. And, and just before you move on to that, there's a sense where, you know, God's holiness is also there. He needs to, he doesn't want Jacob to see his face. And so he, that's why he's like, you know, the daylight is coming. I've, I've got to go. We can mm-hmm. only do this in, in the, in the dark because of, of a sense of holiness. You know, this mm-hmm. is God's holiness and he's re you know, brings this up again with Moses where Moses wants to see him and he only lets him see his back. And there's something about the holiness of God, um, where we are, we see him face to face, but in the face of Jesus, mm-hmm. of our mediator of, of his mm-hmm. only son. And, um, in new heavens and new earth. That's a great hope. We will see God face to face, but now we see him in Jesus. Right. Um, but you see that sense of holiness in this wrestling and, mm. um, and sort of a, a, a lovely boundary, like, no, not now, you know, you don't, you know who I am, you know who I am because I've come to bless you. I'm the same God that you prayed to. Um, but, uh, we're going to, we're going to have this interchange, this wrestling in the dark. Mm -hmm. (laughs) My holiness is too much for you um, at this moment. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so go on. No, that's good. I mean, we're getting, we're getting close to time, but um, the thing I did want to just add to there, which I love this little footnote almost at the uh, end of the paragraph, uh, end of chapter, end of the chapter 32, it says, um, you know, that he can, he rose up the next day and limped off because Mm. of his hip And it says that the Israelites still to this day do not eat the sinew of the thigh that is on the hip socket like in whatever animal they're eating just to remember and honor this because of Jacob's uh, thigh being put out of place. That's right. Which I actually, I love that. I mean, it's just remembering God's promises, which is the same thing we'll see so many of the the festivals and the feasts, you know, the things Mm. that we see established in the Old Testament are uh, these landmarks in their lives to say God did this. Mm. and he intervened and he didn't yeah. leave us and he was faithful. And so, you know, we'll see that all the way up to the Passover, which turns into the Lord's Supper for uh, Christians. And, um, but it's something that 
it's like when we when we uh, were leading a church uh, in the south side of Pittsburgh, we connected with a lot of the people on the Carson Street down there through their tattoos, and it was the similar things. They were memorializing something. Mm. So often we'd ask them what the meaning of it was, and they'd all initially, and they're very kind of, you know, uh, kind of enlightened millennial kind of way be like oh there's no meaning mm. <laughs> but then you start asking them when they got it and they start telling you this whole story of what is behind this tattoo mm. and um <clears throat> and so we do this naturally as people and i think it's actually a really important thing for us um i think we're just going to end on this but just mm. um that we remember i mean because we are so prone to forgetting mm. as we were talking about earlier when we're up against that thing whatever it is when life kind of becomes untenable or we don't have an answer for things, I'm so quick to just forget and to, to turn mm. to fear mm. like we see Jacob doing here mm. earlier. And, but we have these milestones, mile markers in our lives that it's basically just our testimony where we can look back and see that God mm. has actually done something. Mm. And, um, that's right. And so here the Jews, wonderfully never eat the the hip sin, sinews and uh to remember that god actually did keep his promise to jacob and he came and met him as you say mm. that he entered into Sought jacob's world and pursued him yeah and he's the one that started the fight mm. which i love you I know? Know. <laughs> like he comes over like just in the middle of the night and starts wrestling with him and mm. that would be very weird <laughs> and, uh, but it is actually because uh it's because God wanted to, as you say, um, really show Jacob uh, who he's, his real wrestling was with. Mm, you know, that's with, right. With it wasn't with Esau or Laban. No. It was with God himself. Yeah. Jacob and his sin wrestling with God himself and then also Jacob and his faith, you right. know, calling on God's promise. Yeah, this is a real, it's a real turning point uh, for Jacob. And it's so earthy too. You really see God, you know, we talk in in the creative world, you know, doing stuff with your hands and using your left brain or your right brain, you know, the different ways you see God engaging um, Jacob in his fear in a very physical way, you mm -hmm. know, so earthy. Um, this is, this is not um, a God who's sort of a, a different consciousness, you know, or just right. light or disembodied, or, in some disembodied weird way. or just only spiritual. He mm -hmm. like gets down and he actually, um, makes this promise tangible and real in flesh and blood and in sweat, you know, and struggle um, with with Jacob, which I is distinctly Hebrew and Christian. Mm. Um, so this is all very good news. So we're leaving you on a massive cliffhanger now. You know, is Jacob having been met by this divine angel and blessed and encouraged and given a new name? Um, and filled with God's love, is he off to a massive surprise party with Esau <laughs> and 400 of his favorite friends, or is he off to a massacre? Mm. So we will answer that next time. <laughs> <laughs> you can read ahead on your own if you want to um, with Genesis 33, mm -hmm. but we'll get to that. Um, thank you so much for listening today, and um, we just really appreciate your time. And if you'd like to support the show, um, you can, and you can either in the show notes, right? It's all, all the information is in the show notes. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> the there end. you go. <laughs> yeah. If you want to send us an email with a question about marriage or relationships in general, you can find that in the show notes too. And, mm. uh, you can also find a link to our website, dandelionministries.org. And uh, we are just grateful for you listening. Mm. We will see you next time. Thanks. Bye. Have a great day. Bye-bye.